Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity again here at the Royal Society. And once again, Keith and I are joined by Professor Sir Martin Polyakov, esteemed chemist and outgoing Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society. And we want to talk about another esteemed chemist who was a Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society. This is a guy called John Frederick Daniel. Oh yes, the, the Daniel Cell. Yes, mm, yes, yeah. the Daniel Cell, very famous for that. We're not going to talk about the Daniel Cell today, although that was a great accomplishment yes. by a great chemist. What we're going to talk about is this piece of paper, which I actually found by accident yeah. in the archives a number of months ago. It was just sitting on a shelf and I read it and it blew me away. This is actually a coroner's inquest extract and it deals with the death of John Frederick Daniel, oh. which happened yeah. at a meeting of the Royal Society. Yes, but this was at Somerset House and the council meeting. And I'm going to read you some of this extraordinary yeah. coroner's inquest. So we're in the year 1845. And basically another person who was sitting at the table near Daniel yeah. was a chap called Bowman. He was a surgeon and he was present at a meeting of the council of the Royal Society this afternoon at 20 minutes past four o'clock. Martin has a meeting at four o'clock. <laughs> You're not going to like this. <laughs> Here we go. He says, I was seated opposite Professor Daniel, the Foreign Secretary. Professor Daniel had given a lecture at King's College between three and four o'clock. When he came into the society, he appeared in perfect health, but shortly after his eyes became fixed and his breathing deep and laborious. I exclaimed, Professor Daniel is surely in a fit. And immediately everyone got up to render assistance. His breathing became more and more difficult and there was a great fullness of the vessels of the head. Then with the concurrence of the medical gentleman present, I opened the jugular vein. The blood flowed freely. This is at the council, this is the council meeting. Wow. The opening was subsequently closed as he appeared to be rapidly sinking. He died immediately in less than five minutes from the first attack. He never uttered a word, nor was there any convulsion in my opinion. He died of apoplexy. What does that mean, apoplexy? Uh, it's probably a stroke, it yeah. sounds like. It goes on, Professor Owen fully collaborated the above evidence, adding that the deceased's death was caused by a violent stroke of apoplexy. They also point out here that his cravat was not tight. Maybe they were thinking that could have been a possible yeah. cause. He had a short neck, which betrayed the usual character of a tendency to apoplexy. Mr. Bowman added, he was a most temperate man and for the last two years had not tasted wine or alcohol. He also avoided as much as possible animal food in consequence of having had a spitting of blood. And then the jury retired a verdict that the deceased died of apoplexy. Wow. Can you imagine that yeah. at a council meeting? Yes. Well, they were lucky to have a doctor there. We don't well, no, <laughs> he wasn't that lucky. We don't have a doctor on council. No. Of course, the next thing we wanted to do. Yeah. Well, what would you want to see next? What do you think may have popped into our head? Well, perhaps a picture of Daniel or... Sold. Let's get you a picture Let's of Daniel. First. Here's the man himself. Here he is. So he does have quite a short neck, doesn't he? He does. He does. Um, I think with cravats and high collars, everybody looks yes. like they have a short neck at that yes. time. But this is a, a really famous image of him with Faraday. Wow. That's very interesting. Well, the thing that I wanted to see... Yes. Well, actually, I think it was Keith that suggested it, but then I immediately wanted to yes. see it with the minutes from that meeting. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have those. We yeah. have found the council minutes from the meeting where this happened. First of all, we can see who was present at the meeting. Mr. Bowman, Mr. Daniel. Of course. Sir John Lubbock, Murchison, the Marquis of Northampton, the president, and Dr. Roger. Was he Roger of Roger's Thesaurus? Right. Yes, Peter Mark Roger. This is a sort of dictionary of synonyms. What do we know about the meeting? What do the minutes say here? Well, they're quite short compared to the minutes we have now. But <laughs> These were quite short compared to all the minutes. Mr. Daniel being suddenly taken ill and notwithstanding the prompt medical aid which was given to him, expiring in the course of a few minutes. Expiring means dropping dead. The president proposed that in consequence of this awful event, the council should immediately adjourn and that no meeting of the society should be held that evening, which was unanimously agreed to. Think that was the right decision? Yes, I think so. You wouldn't want them to go on without you? 
And it was on the 13th of March, so it was not an auspicious day. I thought maybe at the next meeting there would be tributes and yeah. things, things read. So I went looking. It took me a while, but I did find here... It was resolved that the recommendation of a Fellow of the Society to fill the Office of Foreign Secretary vacant by the death of Mr Daniel be taken into consideration at the next meeting. Ah, and that was all. <laughs> they basically, basically saying who's going to fill the chair. Yeah. And then at the next meeting, we see here on May 22nd, it was resolved by ballot that Lieutenant Colonel Sabine be recommended to the Society for election as Foreign, foreign Secretary. Sir. So it was really dead man's shoes, isn't it? <laughs> it was. How many more council meetings have you got before? One. You? One more. But it's in the morning. Here's a portrait. It's simple enough. It's obviously they've put him in a ring there, a safety ring, propped up between two chairs. But there's more. Have a look at this next picture. So we've had a bit of, a bit of photoshopping, a bit of CGI. A bit of watercolour. A bit of watercolour. Well, that was the Photoshop of the day. Indeed. 